the issue of wealth and is wealth a means to a good life? Because we've discussed this previously. Is wealth independently a means to a good life? And the reason why this question arises is because there are many, many people who believe that the pursuit of wealth is the single thing that will bring you happiness in the life of this world. And these people, you know, there are many, many different categories of those people. So, for, for example, some of them are those who they, you know, uh, spend their whole life with their children, trying to get their children into a profession, and then a degree, and then a this, and a that, and a this, or whatever. And everything else is sacrificed for this one pursuit. And they think that this is happiness. And there are other people who basically engross themselves in business and accumulating wealth. And, you know, they spend um, all of their life, you know, pursue, uh, pursuing and engrossed in all of this thing, all of these things. And they engage in things which might even be unlawful, such as deception and stealing and all those kind of things. So the issue arises... Uh, this type of orientation or this type of thinking, you know, which enters into a person's mind, uh, it, it, it needs to be uh, addressed. And there are some basic observations that we that we can make just very quickly in the, you know, five or ten minutes that we have left, which is that um, first of all is that. As we already mentioned, that a good life lies in many other things, right? Having uh, a tranquil home, um, being pleased with Allah Zawajal, hoping in His mercy, and you know, generally having uh, fitness and health, and all of those other things. These things in themselves, they they provide a good life and a good enjoyment. And wealth doesn't necessarily have to be a part and parcel of that. Right? And we know this from uh, experience, from the examples of millions and millions of people living in you know, um, relative poverty all across many parts of the world, you know, in, in Africa, in, in parts of Asia, in the Far East, in South America, in other places, where these places are not as affluent as other places. But there are millions of people they are content, they are satisfied, you know. Um, and uh, so, so wealth, wealth is not necessarily an independent thing on its own that produces happiness, right? This is a, a first observation. Um, at the same time, like we said before, it doesn't mean that we can't benefit from wealth and it doesn't mean that Allah will not bestow wealth. Wealth obviously is something that can be part and parcel of a good life. And it is part and parcel of enjoying, enjoying the, the favors and the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so, so it, like we said at the very beginning, it does not mean that a believer's life has to be full of misery and full of hardship. Rather, a believer can benefit from the favors and enjoy the bounties and the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal. The point that we are making though is, is wealth the asal? Is wealth the actual foundation of a good life? Or is it something else? That's the issue that we are discussing. And this issue is important because many, many people, many, many believers are put to trial with this thing. And many, many people come from cultures. They come from you know, certain cultures where wealth has been placed above religion. Wealth has been placed above one's duties and obligations to, to Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? There are many, many cultures, and that's because, because you know, uh, for historical reasons, maybe uh, Muslim nations have begun to look at the non-Muslim nations and their affluence and their wealth and their apparent advancement in the life of this world. And so culturally speaking, you know, certain nations have developed a some sort of inferiority complex that we need to be like them, we need to mimic them, we need to this, that, whatever. And so as a result of that, of that cultural change in the mind, then you see in many, many Muslim nations, people, uh, and you see this, you come across people like this, you know, 
that their parents place a tremendous emphasis on their worldly education. Right? To such a degree, like you see in some countries, that if, if a child comes home and he only got 90 out of 100 in the exam, instead of you know, 95 out of, out of 100, then they'll, they'll punish the child and bite his fingers. Right? You see, this, uh, there are stories like this, like in Egypt, for example, or other places, because they're all competing with each other and they want the child to be, in, to be hitting the 98s, 99s, and whatever. Now, this is wulu, this is, this is uh, and that's because they've been enthralled and captivated by this whole thing of, of pursuing a profession and, and earning a livelihood. Right? So, so in Muslim households, in, Muslim, in, in the cultures that have developed, unfortunately, there is this thing where the focus on wealth, the focus on a profession to acquire wealth and so on and so forth, you know, it's been put ahead of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, Iman in Allah, righteous deeds, doing, you know, following the sunnah and being content in the soul, being content in the heart, Right? These are the true and real things which, which, which are real uh, satisfaction and real enjoyment and real pleasure. Right? And there are many, many scenarios which can be given to prove the point that we are making. Right? So, for example, um, for example we, we know that many, many people are completely uh, discontent with the wealth that they have. Uh, they are miserable, and we know this from from direct experience. How many people do you see with with you know mansions and you know and and you see that the families are in turmoil and in ruin, and in 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 you know conflict and and you know and and you see many many examples like this where the wealth itself does not bring this type of uh, uh, you know satisfaction and ease. Likewise, you see people who are engaged in this, who put wealth beyond everything else. You see them always in regret and thinking, you know, if I put my money in this, then I would have tripled my money. And if I didn't do this, and, like always thinking about if I put it, they're always in, um, um, you know, regret and grief and sadness and, and doubt. And, you know, because that's what they're pursuing. And so many of these people, they, 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 they experience these kind of uh, disturbances in the soul, you know, where... where they are grieved by the fact that they didn't make enough money on this trade or in this investment and they could have put it somewhere else and if they only, if only they'd, they'd done, done this and done that, whatever. Right? This is, this is part and parcel of how when you pursue the world, then you, know, you, you basically you punish yourself and you punish your soul in this way. Um, likewise, many people who are given tremendous wealth, you see that this then reflects on their kids. Their kids become corrupt because of the affluence <clears throat> and um, what you find is that because the kids haven't had to work for a living and everything's come on a plate to them you find that they develop like you know um, incompetent children uh, who are spoiled and who are unable to basically w would be unable to get through life on their own and so we can see these tremendous changes in, 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 um, in societies because just over 100 years ago, for example, uh, and even still in some countries, there are, there are kids, or there used to be kids from the age of 7, 8, 9 would have to be sent out to work in the factories. And by virtue of them going out at that age, they would become full-grown men and women by the age of 12, 13, 14, fully able and capable of handling their own affairs. Right? And we don't have that anymore. We don't have that anymore. And that's why the kids who are present today, the kids who are present, you know, you need to be very, very grateful for the fact that, you know, at the age of 10, 12, 14, that you have food on your plate, you know, on your table. And, you know, you have a roof over, because the kids back in those days would, would be out from, literally after, after daybreak and come back out come back in the evening, stuck in factories, working, right? And you don't have this anymore. And, and, and so the, the point being that with affluence, when you have affluence, you don't, you don't have to work, you don't have to struggle, you don't have to pick up skills, you don't have to learn from worldly experiences, 
getting ripped off, getting beaten, getting deceived, getting, you know, and becoming worldly wise, then you become, you just become, um, you know, you, you, you become, um, what's the word? Uh, you become corrupt, basically. You become corrupt. And you become incapable. And you become rendered uh, helpless. Right? This is one of the negative consequences. And that's why you see many, 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 many people who have affluence. They have children who are just completely incompetent and spoiled. And they couldn't even open a can of beans. You know, or make a toast. You know, uh, some of them are to that level. They have to have a servant to do it or something. Right? So, anyway... Uh, this type of thing you see in the in, in the homes of certain people, corruption of kids and just general, you know, um, incompetence and things like that. Likewise, you see some people they they realize they quickly come to realize that wealth isn't everything when they don't when they don't have health. So, how many people are there who are severely sick and ill? Maybe someone. You know, he has to have a, a stomach replacement, as many people have had to in the past. And so therefore they are unable to eat anything apart from fluids. And so perhaps one of these people might launch, you know, might give a huge banquet or something for one of his children's weddings. And he's watching everybody eat from the meal, paid for from his riches. And he himself can't even, he's, all he's able to have is, is basically water or some milk or something. Right? So he can't benefit from his wealth. This is another proof that wealth in and of itself is not an independent means. It's not the foundation of happiness and good enjoyment. Right? So that's another observation from the, from the, from, you know, from, from the worldly uh, experiences. And anyway, to, to the, so the point being, I think the point is very clear now. We made the point very clear that wealth even though it is something that you can be rewarded with, and it is part and parcel of having a good life, it is not the foundation. It is not the asal. It can't be, for all of these reasons that we mentioned previously. And for that reason, we have to be careful not to be deceived. Right? And not to also deceive our children by... by Nurturing them to think that wealth on its own is the source of happiness and good enjoyment. It can be, it can be something that makes things easy, but it is not the foundation, not the asal. So anyhow, we'll we'll end on this particular note, inshallah ta'ala, and in the next.